This evening in our Connect Groups, we're going to begin a, a new study, a new topic of discussion on the one and other passages that are found in the New Testament. Um, we're going to be looking actually at 18 one and other passages over the next four months. And I know that sounds like a lot, but actually there are more than that in the New Testament. And that should send us a very important message that God really does care about how we treat one another and how we relate to one another. Because he gives so much instruction in his word about the attitudes and the actions that we are to take toward each other. We're going to begin this evening with a passage out of the book of Romans chapter 12, a particular emphasis on verse 10, uh, where Paul is going to say, this is the NIV translation, that we are to be devoted uh, to one another in brotherly love. Uh, New American Standard Version will translate the same way. Uh, interestingly, if you look at a couple of other translations, uh, the King James Version, for instance, is going, to be talk, it's going to talk about being, I believe, kindly affectioned. Yeah. And the English Standard Version is going to refer to brotherly affection there. Now, that draws an important uh, point that I want us to spend just a minute on here. And that is, we've talked before about how important it is uh, when you study the Bible to not just rely on commentaries, and I'm not knocking commentaries at all, I use them all the time, but, but one of the best things you can do when you study God's Word to really get a feel for and an understanding of the text is to read it from multiple translations. And here's an excellent example of that. Um, these different translations give you different flavors of meaning for the words that are used here. And when you combine those together, I think it, you get a better understanding of what Paul's really telling us. Um, the word that's used here uh, has its root in the Greek word phileo, which refers to, you can translate it as something like uh, brotherly affection, brotherly love, something like that. It's interesting that, that it refers to an emotional connection. Whereas agape, which is also used a lot in the New Testament, agape, as we've discussed before, is an attitude. Agape says, I'm going to do what's best for you, whether I like you or not, whether we get along or not. I am determined to do what's best for you. This is not that. Uh, this, is, this is making reference to an emotional attachment that we have to one another. And what Paul is saying is, I want you to be devoted to that emotional attachment. I want you to be devoted to one another. Um, actually, what he literally says here is, I want you to Philadelphia, that is, I want you to have this brotherly love, and then he kind of reinforces it by using another form of that word, which the translators obviously kind of struggle with because they call it brotherly affection, kindly affection, devotion. I would argue maybe the best way to translate this, if you were going to go with kind of a modern vernacular, would be, you know, I want you to, uh, I want you to care about each other uh, and, I, and I want it to be like on steroids. Okay, I really want you to care about one another deeply. Now, why is that so important? Because the emotional attachments that we have to each other are incredibly vital in our relationship with each other and in our relationship with God. And God really wants us to deeply care about one another. Because if we do, notice what he says immediately follows. You will show preference to one another, again, depending on the translation of what immediately follows, or you will honor one another. And I think that's absolutely true. If I have a deep affection for you, if I really care 
about you, then I want you to be happy. I want to do what pleases you. In fact, what pleases you is going to be more important to me than what pleases me. I am just naturally, because I care about you, going to seek what is best for you, what makes you happy. I have a sister, Barbara, and brother-in-law, Steve. Um, earlier this year, Carol and I went with them on vacation to Yellowstone. Now, Carol and I had gone to Yellowstone before, really enjoyed it, beautiful place, fascinating. But we had been there. I don't know that I would necessarily have chosen first to go back, but Barbara and Steve had never been there. And we decided vacation together, and when we asked them where they wanted to go, Barb's immediate reaction was, I would love to go to, to Yellowstone. And so that's where we went. And it was just fine. I, I didn't really care where we went. And if that satisfied her and made her happy, if that was a place she wanted to see, then that just tickled me to death. And I think as brothers and sisters in Christ, the importance of phileo, the importance of this brotherly affection in a relationship is critical because what that says is that because we really do genuinely care about one another and care about one another's feelings and one another's desires and wants, we are going to give preference to the feelings of others. We're going to, we're going to seek to honor those feelings because we want to. Now, those relationships, again, are absolutely critical. And I think that's one of the reasons why these connect groups are so important. Because it's in these connect groups that we have the opportunity to really get to know each other and in, in a very real sense to fall in love, understanding the term I'm using here, to fall in love with each other. Uh, when we sit in the auditorium on Sunday mornings, that's a very important time. And some very important things take place there as far as our relationship with each other and our worship of God. But that's not the time when we develop ties and when we develop relationships. It's when we spend time together in situations like these connect groups that we really get to know one another and that we develop these deep emotional attachments. And again, those are such a blessing, so important. Through the years, oh, I don't know how many, uh, I'm just blessed. Relationships that I've had with you know, grandmas and grandpas in the faith, aunts and uncles in the faith, brothers and sisters, in the faith that I'll cherish right on into eternity. They are, they, they've, they've deeply enriched my life and, and, and just richly blessed me in every way. Just last Monday, I did a graveside for a, a dear brother who had been one of my elders when I was at Sunset. They had moved to Tulsa and he passed away and Norma asked me if I would conduct Ken's graveside here at the National Cemetery because they were burying him here. And I said, of course I would. And I'm not ashamed to say when the time came, I cried because I loved that man. Uh, he was a wonderful, wonderful brother, uh, a, a great mentor, and meant a lot to me. That, I think, is a beautiful thing. I think that's a gift from God, a, a blessing that we get to enjoy as we enrich our relationships with each other as we share with one another. And so as we begin to look at these one another passages, keep in mind that at the base of all of this is not just that we seek one another's highest good. That's a great thing. But also that there are these really rich and beautiful relationships that we develop with each other, this, this brotherly love that forms, that is, that is such a rich foundation and support for our lives in Christ and our relationship with God. And so as you discuss this passage this evening, as we talk about what it means to be devoted to God and some of the things surrounding this, uh, just keep in mind how blessed we are to be a part of this family. God bless you in your discussion this evening. Love one another Serve one another Pray for each other In 
courage, one.